Welcome, FNUS57 here. Once again, I'm on my Xbox One to bring you yet another video. In today's guide, I will be showing you how to unlock the But It Can Be Better achievement on State of Decay 2. For this particular achievement, you need to fully upgrade a resource outpost. It is a rare achievement worth 20 gamer score with currently less than uh, basically a 1% unlock rate. So this achievement was added to the game as part of the set of three achievements at the end of June 2021 in the most recent content pack. Now, with this expansion and update to the game, there's a few new things all around outposts and a whole bunch of other stuff in the game. So for this, you can use any community, whether it be a new community or a existing community on any difficulty. For the purposes of the video, we are going to go ahead and use the same community that I used in the previous video for the landmark outpost and just really quickly cover what you have to do. So unfortunately, uh, in the last video, I ran into several glitches and I don't know exactly what caused most of them, including the barrel rolling truck. But I did a little digging and finally got a few more responses. So as far as this particular set of achievements is concerned, first of all, they are host locked, meaning you must be in your game in order to unlock the achievement. You cannot do this in co-op. Secondly, this does not seem to be available in any way, shape, or form in the Heartland DLC. This only seems to function correctly in the actual base game. And thirdly, you must completely change the difficulty slider or change to a new world in order to completely refresh the map. The little thing that I had experienced in the previous video where it said that it refreshed the map, for some reason it did not actually do that. So if you've been running into any technical difficulty with this achievement, then what you're going to need to do is select all of the three sliders and move them over to a different difficulty than what you are on and then accept, which will go ahead and completely reset the map. Or you can simply go to the map if you're using a pre-existing community, and if you have the map exits available, you can go ahead and use the map exits to switch to a different location. Now, you'll notice I have the landmark outpost, and then one of each type of non-specialty outpost claimed, which you can see here under my base menu. For this particular achievement, all we need is the actual regular outposts. The ones that would normally provide meds, ammunition, fuel, food, or building materials. Uh, the ones that provide beds, they can't be upgraded. They're just the same as always. And the landmark outposts do not seem to offer the means to be upgraded either. So regardless of the outpost that you want to take, the very first thing you need to do is remove the plague heart that is in the area surrounding the uh, area that you wish to control. Uh, that's a new mechanic that they added to the game so you do that after you've refreshed the map if you're using a pre-existing community if you are not using a pre-existing community then you kill the plague heart after you just have the ability to do so i should mention if you are refreshing the map you will keep the vehicles that fit in your starting base parking slots so two vehicles you will keep you will not keep the other vehicles, but you will keep the items in your stash and storage and all of that stuff. If you are going to the map and using the map exit, you will keep your survivors. You will keep the items in your stash. You will not keep your vehicles 
Um, at least that's the way that it was when I did it previously. They may have changed it, but uh, I don't think that they have. So let's go ahead and go through what you need. Now, I'm doing this on standard difficulty because for some reason on green zone, it was a little bit buggy. So if you're playing on green zone, the influence costs should be slightly lower for the upgrades. Now, once you've destroyed the plague hearts in the area and removed this red fog, then you'll be able to actually clear a building and take over the outpost. Highlighting it on the map, if you zoom in, you can see this little icon around a upgradable outpost that is not secured. Once you've cleared it and spent the influence to claim it, you can go ahead and actually see it as a green icon in which you have the option of either going there for the achievement or going back over to the base menu. So for this achievement, we have to fully upgrade an outpost. It does not have to be both outposts or all outposts. It just has to be one. And I should mention before I go any farther that due to the costs associated with these upgrades, I would not recommend that you do this to outposts that are unnecessary. If you're not sure what I mean by an unnecessary outpost, feel free to click on your resources menu to reveal a more detailed breakdown of what your current resources are. As you can see, I have almost balanced out, actually gone on the plus side for the amount of food that I'm using. Meds are completely balanced out. Ammo is actually a plus one to per day. Materials are a plus three. Fuel is a plus one. Nothing on parts, influence, or prestige. So obviously this will be different depending on the difficulty that you're on, the base that you have, and the skills from your community. But considering that you can produce both meds and food through the use of gardens or hydroponics, um, or the large farm if you have it, as well as certain community member skills. For instance, if we click on that menu, you'll see the arsenal, the person arsenal, which is this character right here. If we view the details on them, this is a red talon operator, and they have the skill foraging, which gives you the knowledge of gardening and plus one food per day, plus one meds per day. So between using survivors with specialty skills to generate more of the items that you need and using specific facilities, for instance, the garden to grow food, you can really micromanage what you need. And obviously this will be easier to do on green zone difficulty or standard difficulty. As you get up into dread nightmare and lethal though, this becomes a lot more intense. You can also use facility mods like the bag of fertilizer or garden tools to even further increase the yield. Or you can even use the compost bin. So lots of stuff that you can do. But as a new player who's going to play through the game, you're definitely going to need meds because your infirmary actually has a cost of meds per day and materials per day. And then on top of that, your workshop uses materials per day. And if you have a guard tower, that uses ammunition per day. Plus your survivors eat uh, quite a bit of food per day, depending on your level. So with that little bit of a tutorial out of the way, I would highly recommend that you probably upgrade the ammo outpost. That would be the most useful one. But you could do meds. Fuel I never really have much of an issue with. Food can be balanced as we talked about. And materials, eventually you get to the point when you've built everything, you don't really need materials. So let's go ahead and do some upgrading. Now, I did mention that I would cover everything. I'm going to be upgrading each one of the outposts, assuming I have the skills required so that you guys can see exactly what's needed. So for level one on standard difficulty, all you need is 800 influence and you need two materials. Uh, we have 20 materials, we have the labor required, and we have the influence. I really don't want to spend the influence, but we're going to go ahead and do it nonetheless. 
So we'll click on the upgrade option. If you have the labor to do it, you'll go ahead and have uh, plenty of, of labor here. And now you'll see the differences between all the outposts. So we just spent a whole bunch of influence, as I showed earlier. You can't upgrade the two-story house. You can't upgrade the wind farm. So it's kind of like, eh. And now we're going to take a look at our free clinic, which by upgrading the free clinic, we now have a few new perks. So we've increased the production to plus two meds per day. Same thing, ammo plus two meds per day, fuel plus two, food plus two, building materials plus two. And you can go over to the skills menu or um, resources, I should say, and you'll see the reflected breakdown there. Pretty cool if you're making a farming community, pretty useless for anything else. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the other options are. So the other options we have is we can learn medicine, which is used to gain or improve the medicine skill, useful if you don't have it. Or we can go ahead and upgrade the outpost to level three. Now, in order to do this upgrade, this is where it gets very expensive. This costs 2,000 influence and four building materials. I would only recommend doing this on the outpost that you wish to do and you really need the most of, which is, again, probably going to be ammunition. So it's... Um, Really, all the outposts are the same. You can learn chemistry from the ammo one. You can learn craftsmanship from the materials one. You can learn gardening from the food one. And you can learn mechanics, which can be a very useful skill from the fuel depot. If we look at it as far as upgrade requirements, the requirements for the medical outpost is knowledge of medicine. The requirements for the ammunition outpost is knowledge of chemistry. So you notice we can't actually upgrade this one because we don't have a character with the knowledge of chemistry. You need the knowledge of craftsmanship for building materials. And you need the knowledge of gardening for food. And then you need the knowledge of mechanics for fuel. Uh, in order to upgrade that outpost. So it's pretty cool that you can actually go to the site and use this function to gain or improve a specific skill. Of course, that only works if the community member that you are trying to put that skill on does not already have a fifth skill because you can't have six skills. So if we look, I have a community member with gardening, medicine, hacking, foraging, fortifications, and soundproofing. If I was to find a, another survivor with only four skills, I could use one of these upgraded base menu things to go ahead and put the fifth skill that I want on there. But it can be kind of rare to find a survivor with only four skills. And then you just have to go there, go put the skill on there, do the upgrade, and then you can always kick them out later. So we're just getting the achievement. That's where the tutorial ends. We're going to go ahead and do the upgrade to the, um, the meds outpost because, yeah. While you can grow meds, you can also use a crap load of meds when you're making things like plague cure in bulk or if you're trying to do things like making um, injury kits you know, if you're trying to go through here and craft first aid kits it takes quite a bit of medicine to craft first aid kits it also takes a fair amount of meds and plague samples to craft the bulk plague cure so yeah it can it can keep you busy but again you can grow them as well all right, now if we look at the free clinic level three, there's our achievement a few seconds later, which is, but it can be better. So all you had to do was those two upgrades to an outpost. If you have only one outpost in mind, then that is simply a 
mere 2800 influence and i'll cover a little bit on influence farming real quick at the end of this video of course we still have the option to learn medicine but now this outpost is granting plus three meds per day so i really have to say this is a huge update and the reason why i say that this is such a huge feature is due to the fact that if we get a bigger base combined with the level 3 command center combined with the satellite dish or signal booster mod combining that with hacking i do believe the total you can have now is actually um two four six eight outposts if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken on that because I don't have everything stacked on a single community. But still, if you're making a farming community, especially to turn out resources, you really can't beat having this. It's a pretty awesome update. Now, when it comes to influence, assuming that you have a level 3 command center... Um, and you have the correct knowledge and everything to upgrade to level three command center, you can do a task that allows you to do this signal broadcast, which gives you plus 20% influence gained for 46 minutes or roughly about that, depending on the world that you're playing on. Now, one of the easiest things to do for influence is simply kill zombies. Uh, another thing that's really good for influence if you wanted is to go around and kill freaks. Uh, it all adds up, but one of the fastest ways is to do that task and then drive around and kill all the plague hearts and then reset the difficulty of the map so that you build up to the point that you have a starting amount of influence of 9999 then go ahead and start building your base out permanently for your resource farm or for you know just your legacy completion or whatever it is that you want to do but yeah updates pretty darn cool new achievement who doesn't love new achievements i've always been a super big fan of achievements that we can earn i already did the guide for the biggest ball of twine in minnesota and that leaves just the three hour tour i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if there was for some reason something that i did not actually cover in the video just feel free to ask and i will be more than happy to answer the question and help out as best as possible until next time my brothers and sisters thy legion Enjoy your zombie killing experience while earning a few extra achievements. Most importantly though, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay frosty.